All right, you guys, welcome to the Think Bigger podcast. This is a branch of the Think Bigger project that is a a brand and a movement and an ideology that was created to uh, better the community and the culture around it. So the Think Bigger project has multiple facets to it. The Think Bigger podcast is one that has come from popular demand. So here it is, episode one. I am your host, Big Mike. And we are going to talk to each other like adults, okay? This is intelligent subject matter. If you think this is going to be a bunch of screaming and yelling, profanity, um, and just, you know, the, the kind of the usual that you get, that's not what this is, okay? This is a conversation from young to old. We're going to speak to each other about subjects that get brought up every day, okay? All over social media, there's all of these things going around, this inspirational quote here, this uh, meme, this gif, and all of these um, screenshots of things that that create this news and this way of thinking and everything from yoga to to uh, meditation to to God to the universe. And there's this influx of subjects and and ideas and people are talking about them in different ways. And in a lot of ways, I think they mean well. But we live in a day and age where people don't actually look past what's right in front of them. They take a screenshot of a quote, a meme, or a gif, um, the first sentence of a caption on someone's post somewhere, and they run with it. People don't look up context. They don't look, the, they don't look up the history of what's going on. And that is a very dangerous uh, habit. It starts to apply to a variety of things. So the Think Bigger project has multiple facets, all of which are meant to provide inspiration to change the way that we think, okay? And we're going to help each other do that. This podcast, the Think Bigger podcast, we are going to address subjects and we're going to address them in a way they need to be touched on, okay? So let's let's go back to this social media thing. What is what is it all about, you know? The the number one thing in this day and age everyone's saying is you got to do what makes you happy. A lot of times that's entrepreneurship. Everyone wants to be an entrepreneur. Everyone wants to to say that they don't work for uh, corporate America, that they do their own thing and, and they own their own company or companies. And that mindset is profound and amazing and it's part of the American dream. And I respect it. But because of the foolishness, the the diluted mass content that goes on social media, people are are, are kind of starting to miss what's really good about that. Like what, what we're talking about here is an influx of information and people sometimes, you know, the younger you are, the less experienced you are in life. There's nothing wrong with admitting that. And so you're going to have less opportunity to know when somebody's, you know, hitting you with nothing but smoke and mirrors, or if the inspirational quotes and captions that you see and read all day long are from a person or a company that actually does anything. You know, let's be honest. Let's be honest about that. A lot of these people or companies or pages that are posting things, do you even know who runs the page? Do you know the person? Do you know the company? Do you know what they do or if they do anything for your culture, whether that be streetwear, hip hop, you know, music culture, automotive culture? It doesn't matter what you apply that to. Is the company or the people that you rock with, that you support via your liking their pictures or or posts on social media, following them on YouTube, any of those things, that is not just showing them support, that is making them money. And you have to ask yourself, does that person, does that company actually do anything for the culture? Okay? That's a question. Let's, let's let that one marinate, okay? If you wear a brand, can you answer the question of why do you wear it? Why do you wear X brand? Why do you wear Y brand? Why? I've done this in real life on purpose, and I've gotten the answer, which is kind of what I started to expect after a while, is that, I don't know, man, I just like it. 
Now, if you have chosen to say that I don't care and I'm not going to look up who started this company or what the premise of this company or brand is, I don't want to do any of that. I just like the look of the logo or the colorway. If that is your conscious decision, I respect it because it took thought and you made a decision. But if your answer is, oh, I don't know, I just wear it, that is not an answer. As an adult, that is not an acceptable answer. It does not matter what it is. You need to know who and what and why you are a part of that, of that movement, of that brand, of that culture. What is it? What is it? Who is it? Right? These, are, these are conscious decisions. You can't just float through life making somebody else money. It's ironic because everyone wants to be for themselves. Everyone wants to be an entrepreneur, but they're out there you know, supporting and, and advertising for all of these other people and companies, and they can't even say why, okay? So that's one of the most important things. It comes up the most in the live streams on my Instagram page. That's one of the most recurring things. And it was, it was one of the premises that started the Think Bigger project is to give a brand and a movement and an ideology that is from the culture, for the culture, that benefits the culture. It actually is to stimulate maturity and intelligent thought. Okay, There is a real premise behind it. Okay, That is an example of what we are talking about here. Now, speaking about entrepreneurs and everything, that's also the other thing that we let's let's talk about that. It's all about what is the word that it seems to be all about these days? Okay, passion. Not just these days. That word has been around for a long time, but it's the premise of so many things. Passion, that's the love, right? If you find something you love, you'll never work a day in your life. That is a saying that has been around a long time. That's your passion, okay? You are passionate about something. Let's take the automotive culture. You go to a car meet and you're in a parking lot on a, you know, whatever weekend night and there's hundreds, hundreds of people of all ages, various types of cars, right? If you talk to them about cars, passionate. That's one thing you're not going to misunderstand. People will talk your ear off about their car or just about cars in general. And, and the passion, the enthusiasm for where they are and what they're doing is not in question. Okay, but, but what does one do with that passion? Why is it that a year or two or five or ten years later you have those same people doing the same thing, right? at a car meet or a car show waiting in line to get in. They are appreciating it. They're a part of the culture, but they're always talking about how they want to be the next thing. They want to build a better car. How come I haven't won, let's say, first place or any place if that's what their goal is? You can always find people that are passionate. But what does that passion do? Okay, Whether it be your job, whether it be the way you live, what you drive, any of those things. Okay, so that's the thing. Everyone talks about being passionate. Okay, but, but what? What does passion do? It is just part of the process. This whole social media world has kind of made people look at life as it's like Disneyland. It's like a Disney movie, you know? Everything just works out. You take a lot of the quotes you see on social media, you know, the universe will provide. You know, for people who believe in God, they're not going to look at it that way. They're going to say that God will provide, right? Whatever title you want to give that type of thinking, do you just sit back? If you believe in the good Lord, do you just sit back and think that God is going to give you what you want and need? If it's the universe, you know, that's what people are on right now. The universe will provide. I see so many Instagram quotes and, and memes and, and just all of these things about, you know, something like that, you know. It's not your time. When it's time, it'll happen. Okay, cool. The universe will provide. All you have to do is put it out there and the universe will give back to you. Okay, so whether you want to call it God, whether you want to call it the universe, Whatever you want to call it, to think that you can just sit there and that it's going to just happen for you is foolish. Okay, this is not a Disney movie. There's no magic involved. Okay, 
this is the reality of it, okay? You don't have to like it. You don't have to agree with it. But the reality of it is, is that something like passion, which is real and it can be burning inside of you, you, you yearn to do something or to say something or to build something. What comes next after the passion? It, it's not enough, okay? That's not a popular thing to say, but passion, your passion may not be enough. What comes next? And that is your drive. You need to be driven. It is the determination that comes with the passion. You can have all of the emotions swirling around inside of you. But if you don't have the determination, if you're not driven and have the subsequent work ethic with your hands to, to make it happen to work for it rather than just sit back and think that it will happen because you have passion that is idiotic it is not real and i do not like the fact that there's so many people out there preaching that to us that's not the reality of it okay you cannot just be enthusiastic you cannot just be passionate you have to work and that is where the drive passion then drive drive means to be driven okay to have determination to to let's you know what here let me give you guys a definition these are official definitions of the word drive because i think some people misunderstand what this is okay to be driven to be determined to have a work ethic okay in the context of psychology it's defined as an innate determined urge to attain a goal or satisfy a need. That is your drive, your internal drive, okay? That's what translates to, to work ethic, okay? It's, it's all part of the whole, your passion and then your drive, okay? These are important things that I think people don't really touch on, okay? You have this innate determination to attain a goal or satisfy a need. That is your drive. And then the third part that I believe is very, very crucial is the focus. It seems sort of, it seems sort of obvious, right? Yeah, of course I'm going to be focused if I'm passionate, if I if I'm driven, if I have a, a work ethic, of course I'm going to be focused. It's not always that simple, you guys, because being focused means what? Maintaining a, di a direction and the goal. What is the goal that you have for yourself? Can you verbalize the goal? If someone asks you, what are you trying to do with, say, your car, this car hobby, the, the, the culture of modifying cars, the culture of, you know, you skateboard, right? Okay, cool. You skate. What are you trying to do with your skating, with your car building, with your shoe collection, right? With your anything. It's applicable across the board. Let's be real, right? What is the purpose? You need to be conscious and have a goal in your head. And you need to be able to say that. You don't have to explain yourself to anyone in this world, but you do need to answer yourself in the mirror. When you look at yourself in the mirror, literally, literally or figuratively, you need to be able to answer to yourself what is the goal and from there you have the trifecta you have the passion you are enthusiastic you are passionate about something you have the determination you have the drive to make it happen you're willing to work you have that work ethic and then you have the focus the goal what is the goal and only when you can call it what it is and you have decided what that goal is can you achieve it we all have time and money. Some people have more money than others, but we all have the same amount of time. You have only so much time. So it would make the most sense to know where you're trying to go. What are you trying to do? What is the goal? And then you can be focused on it. You know, you know the saying, keep your eyes on the prize. That's to keep you from being distracted, okay? Distracted by the next new pop culture thing, trying to keep up with the Joneses, being distracted by people, being distracted by anything. Keep your eyes on the prize. That is the focus. Passion, 
drive, and focus. Okay. Does this make sense to you? I mean, comment, let me know. I will respond to you. This is a conversation. This is, I know many of you are listening to this. You're at home with your families. You guys are cleaning the house. You guys are barbecuing. Some of you are in the garage wrenching. A lot of you guys, we do the live streams and we communicate while you guys are on your break at work. Okay, we talk in many different ways. A lot of you commute. That's kind of just a thing in most states and countries. We are uh, commuting, you know, Southern California, New York, you know, Chicago, all these major metropolitan areas, there's a lot of traffic. It's a lot of uh, time on the subway system, the metro, whatever you guys are utilizing. Okay. You, some people use audiobooks. Some people do it that way. Whatever the case may be, you know, however you guys listen, this is a conversation. Okay. You have to have a conversation, most importantly, with yourself within yourself. Okay. It's not weird to sit down and allocate time to have a conversation with yourself. I think most people don't even know how to really do that. It doesn't make you crazy. It's not a weird thing. I mean, some of you are probably just imagining some dude in the corner of a, of a parking lot, you know, like talking to himself. That's not what this is. Okay. The number one person that we need to be the most familiar with and the most comfortable with is ourselves. You need to know who you are, what you are, what you stand for, why you stand for it. Okay, does that make sense to you guys? If it doesn't, that's a whole different subject. But once you know who you are and what you believe and why you believe it, you can start to make these other decisions that need a foundation. Okay, you need to know who you are. Have a conversation with yourself. Spend time with yourself, whether you want to call that meditating, you want to call that, you know, you pray, you know, time to yourself, turn off music, turn off your phone, turn off the TV, right? Some people do it while driving. I, uh, I used to drive for a living and uh, I would be in the car, man, five, six, eight hours a day. I mean, you know, stopping and getting in and out of the car. Sometimes there'd be a longer drive. Sometimes it's short, you know, but the point is, is that there was one time where I was driving and uh, the radio um, the face, the deck in the car broke. And I remember like, what am I going to do? You know, I'm going to, dr I drive Monday through Friday, you know, essentially eight to four to 5 PM full-time job as a, a, a courier service. I was delivering items. Right. And I first said, what am I going to do? I have all of this time that I'm going to be in this car and it's going to drive me crazy. And so that was a mindset that I went into it with in the first day or two. I, I think I was like uh, on my cell phone. Um, back then, it wasn't illegal to talk on the phone while driving. Uh, so I did. Made phone calls. People called me. And that's how I filled the time. And after a while, you know, in between those phone calls or, you know, deliveries, I would, you know, think about certain things. And I've always been into a reflecting and thinking deeply on things. So I would do that. And after a while, I started to appreciate the ability to do that. And I did it on purpose. So I never fixed the deck in the car. And I think for a minimum of, I think it was about a year. Yes, a year. I drove in a car, essentially every day with no radio. Because I started to deeply value the time I could spend in relative silence to think, to analyze, to, to reflect on things going on in my life, to, to, to get to know myself. And you guys, it was one of the best things I've ever done. And it isn't like you hit some type of revelation, you hit some type of point where you've now, that's it, you know yourself and you, you know, you... It's nirvana and you, you're done. You finished it. No, we're all growing. We're all learning. We are all going to experience something that will slightly change what we think and how we think it or dramatically change it. Life is going to be filled with amazing positive things and traumatic things. And each one of those we can allow to be a lesson to teach us so we can evolve as people. The Think Bigger Project and this Think Bigger Podcast are ways that we can help each other to stimulate 
internal conversation and then as we utilize different forms of social media we can start to do it live where i'll take questions from you guys i'll address them specifically that's what i basically do in the instagram live streams but it's a much more small group of 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 quality content and conversation that we have most of them are regulars and you know we know each other um on a on a very real basis this is going to provide more people the opportunity to hear these things and for us to have a dialogue about them okay because there's so much going on on social media it's it's just a massive flow of information and misinformation and inspiration and stupidity and all of these extremes ranging from all the way to the left all the way to the right everything in between and it's very logical that it can be overwhelming even if people don't realize it everyone's attention span is short you look at a picture people don't read the caption they just double tap it they like it they just scroll through the first sentence of a caption maybe if they see a long long caption people aren't reading it they glance at a photo they like it that's it and that's dangerous okay especially when it starts to come to quotes and 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 um, sections of facts of history. There's a lot of what people would call conspiracy theories, some of which I hate that terminology because it makes you immediately want to go in the direction of, well, that's some bullshit. No, 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 not necessarily. You know, anyone who wants to analyze what has been given to them or presented to them, whether that be from the media or from their friends, rumors, whatever you want to apply it to, anyone who wants to try to actually understand what that is, the context or anything, okay, I, I value and respect that kind of person, okay? Because you question what is presented to you does not make you a weirdo. It does not make you a conspiracy theorist. It does not make you unpatriotic. It does not make you any of those things, okay? You are simply trying to understand it. You are not going to just take what somebody told you and take it as the 100% solid truth, okay? Context matters and the context of political statements and quotes and in this what's going on in our world right now the context of a quote that ends up making it on social media matters who said it when they said it half the time these quotes that are on social media the person who they're quoting didn't even say that if you use a quotation mark it means that you are going to use another person's exact wording. You cannot paraphrase that. You cannot reword that, whether because you think it'll just sound better or to make it shorter or make it fit somewhere. No. If you're going to use a quote, it is literally a quote from another person or source. So it shouldn't be modified. That type of journalistic integrity, that type of, 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 necessity is has been washed away on social media people are like well that's essentially what it was or i think that's who said it that seems logical right but how many people are actually taking what they're reading and looking it up for themselves there's nothing wrong with admitting that you don't do it if you don't do it you don't do it and you just have to be able to acknowledge that okay just acknowledge it it's normal now you just look at a photo real quick you like it you just glance at a quote and you uh, screenshot it or use a repost app and you'll repost it because you like it it's uh it's it's profound it, it, it it's uh something you think people will like and i get that but what about knowing if that quote is really a quote from someone it doesn't take more than 10 seconds to just look it up yourself and it takes away from the depth of the quote or or how it could affect someone if it ends up being you know, stolen. You guys, it matters. Just because social media tells you it doesn't matter just because there's repost apps and there's absolutely no check to see if something's real or not, you can stop and check, okay? Whether it be um, segments of the news about politicians and laws that are going on around us, what's going on in the world, okay? Those are some of the most important ones, but we sort of just take what gets put out there. That's dangerous, you guys. That's dangerous, okay? So this is the type of stuff that we are here talking about 
on the Think Bigger podcast, okay? And I believe that you don't need a gimmick. You don't need to act like a cartoon character. I don't need to act crazy to to be able to have a conversation with you guys. So for for the new listeners, okay? There is a certain level of a uh, of level of of surprise that I have been hit with many times. Um there was um one of the biggest surprises was a time where I found out that one of the guys who was in the Instagram live stream. For those of you listening, you can uh check out this Instagram page. It's my personal page. It's the Big Mike. T H E B I G M I K E. The Big Mike. That's where we communicate. That's where I put out uh the information and and uh you know some of my life and what I do within the different communities and and cultures that I'm a part of. But one of the regulars that uh was in there told me that they were working at an O'Reilly's. I believe it was an O'Reilly's um, in Michigan. I don't remember the exact city or town. But, uh, you know, social media, you know, the internet is this amazing tool where people all over the world or all over the country can sit there and communicate in an instant um, as if they were right by each other. So, you know, in a lot of the live streams, um, I've got a lot of uh, peoples in Indonesia, Japan, a lot of people in the UK, London, Belgium, and um, those are some of the most consistent, you know, people from across the globe that are in there. And then, of course, within the states, all over the East Coast, you know, shout out to everyone from New England, New York. Philly, tri-state area, go all the way down to Florida, the South, Atlanta, and you name it. These are the consistent people that are in the live streams. And and um, this technology that we have with, with the internet is amazing. And so this particular person, we always had fun. They would always hop in and communicate. And so this person, you know, I'm from here, I'm from here, I'm from here. The people who don't know each other would say hi to each other. And uh, it got to a point where this particular gentleman was um, fairly consistent. He would hop in and be a part of the live streams. And he found I found out that he worked in an O'Reilly's in Michigan. And one day he told me, um, you know what, man, you're not going to believe this story. I was like, okay, what's up? He said, he's at O'Reilly's sitting at the counter on his break. And he's got his phone propped up. And so my face is on there because of the Instagram live. And um, he's, you know, I think he was listening with headphones, I believe is what he said. And he said that his manager walked by. This is a manager at an O'Reilly's in Michigan. Okay. I'm from SoCal. For those of you that don't know, I live in Southern California. And so I'm sitting there. Um, he's sitting there with his phone propped up. I'm on a live stream. I think it was... Uh, sitting in my car when I was doing this. And he said, my manager walked by and stopped dead in his tracks and looked at my phone and said, oh, you listen to Big Mike? And he said he like froze and was like, what? And he's like, yeah, man, that dude speaks the truth. You should listen to him more and just kept walking. Okay, think about that, okay? I was surprised. He was surprised. He said he was just like, my manager knows who you are. And, 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 you know, I don't know, guys. To me, that's crazy because I don't know the manager. I never caught his name. You know, he was uh, substantially older than the guy who's in my live stream. But somehow, some way, not only did he know who I was, but he had that respectable, um, kind compliment. And he said, you should listen to him more. And then to make it even crazier, he was like, you know what? Put that on the loudspeaker in the store so that other people can hear it. So for months, it ended up becoming where whenever I was on a live stream, they would take the the playlist of whatever music they were playing at this O'Reilly's in Michigan, and they would plug in the live stream. In this case, it would be this podcast now. And they would play that in the store and and listen to it for the the hour of their lunch break. Or even when one person got off their lunch break and was back on work, the manager said, just leave it. I mean, that's 
that's crazy. To me, that is crazy that instead of playing, you know, whatever music they were playing there, that that is the subject matter that want they wanted to be over their loudspeakers so that even customers, you know, they felt that it was quality enough content for customers and employees to listen to while they're working. So these are some of the reasons why the Think Bigger podcast has been born to provide episodes of subject matter that are downloadable and you guys can play them at your convenience, whether you're cleaning, commuting, wrenching in the garage, etc. Because of things like that, you know, I ha- I have one form of social media. It's Instagram. I let Facebook close a long time ago. I have a Twitter account and I probably tweeted. I think that's the term tweeted. I probably did that twice the same month that I made the account like eight years ago and haven't used it since. I've contemplated trying, but I just, I don't want my my mind to get immersed and become slush on social media. So you have Instagram and no Facebook, so just Instagram and then the Think Bigger Project website, thinkbiggerproject.com. And from there, you can go to the YouTube channel. This podcast will be available on a link there as well. That's it. But somehow, some way, without utilizing every form of social media, without trying to hashtag everything, without trying to disseminate the information all over the world, a manager of an O'Reilly's in Michigan not only knew who I was and appreciated whatever I was talking about, but allowed it to be played over their sound system. And that, my friends, is just one of many stories that just blows my mind. And I value people who value me. And that sounds sort of obvious, but it's not obvious because, you know, appreciating a person and letting them know that you appreciate them are two entirely separate things. And that kind of brings me to to a habit that I have developed over the years. And I want you guys to do that. In fact, I want you to do it right now. Okay. If you have to pause this and do it and come back on, or if you can, you know, if you have this playing and you have in the background and you have your phone in your hand, do this. But whenever you think about somebody, family, loved one, whatever. Whenever you think about someone, don't say, man, I'm going to call them or text them later. Do it right then, right then and there. Okay. Some people are a little bit more organized and they might make a note of it. Not a mental note. I'm talking about a literal note that will remind you. If you do something like that, that's different. But I know the high majority of you guys, you think about someone, you know, you could have You could have just left your wife at home to go to work. She could be at work. She could be doing something else. And you just saw her five minutes ago or five hours ago. And you think about her. You know what, man? Just text her right then and there and tell her I miss you, thinking about you. Who cares? Does that sound cheesy to you? That's sad. It's not cheesy, man. It's real. Is your mom? Is your mom still around? That's a real question. Right? Is that a that's a real question? Maybe that's a subject that people don't want to address. I don't know because you know what? There's somebody listening to this who doesn't have their mom anymore. Maybe they never had their mom, and it's easy. It's easy to forget that. So if you think about your mom, man, you like your mom. Was she, was your mom good to you, man? Then the minute you think about something that she did, you need to call her or text her and just let her know. Just do it, man. It doesn't matter. It, especially for men, I think this is harder for men. You know, this society in this day and age. You guys, it's harder because men, you know, we're supposed to be, you know, supposed to be macho. You're not supposed to be, you know, sentimental. Man, excuse my language, but fuck that, right? It's important. It's important to be emotionally aware, right? You miss somebody, tell them. If it's your friend, the homies, right? If you have a good friend, a friend that, I'm not talking about someone that you just like show off the the newest pair of shoes you guys just got or whatever, or, or a car part. No, 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 no. I'm talking about if you have a real friend and they're good to you and you're in, and, and they're good for you, they're part of what makes your life be good. You need to tell them that thinking about something or thinking about someone and telling someone are two separate things. And it's very easy. We're all busy. Everyone's working. Everyone's multitasking. I get it. But you have to make a habit of doing that. It's important. 
just do it right now if you hear the, if you hear this in the background and you have your phone by you or you're on your phone just get off instagram get off whatever you're doing real quick and just text someone that comes to your mind cuz someone came to your mind when i was talking about this someone came to your mind that's important to you okay either the person you're with dating married to whatever a family member or somebody that you had a, a an argument with a falling out with and you're just over it and you're like I, I i miss that person then you know what it's not even about swallowing your pride just text them right now right tell them you're sorry when can we uh, sit down and have a conversation with each other i miss you i love you any of those things any of those things if it's someone platonic relationship a friend whatever text them and say i want to see you let's what's your schedule like let's make time does this stuff sound cheesy to you these little things will change not just your life, but they will change everyone else's. If all of us do that, think about the effect it will have, right? Am I right? Come on, guys. This is not some kind of revolutionary thing, okay? This is simple. This is simple logic, and it's about applying it. It's about applying it. This is where the difference between the internet world and, and inspirational quotes and screenshots and reposts, this is the difference between that and reality, okay? If you repost something nice, some cute saying on Instagram and you tag a bunch of friends and you think that that qualifies the same as calling someone and telling them I miss you, you need to unplug from the matrix for real, okay? If you tag someone in a, a puppy video on Instagram and be like, this is cute, I think of you. That's nice, my dude. That's nice. That's, that's adorable, okay? Call them and be like, I miss you. I want to spend time with you. I'm pretty sure they're going to think the puppy video is adorable, okay? But that's Instagram. That's the internet. That's not your real life, okay? Get off of it and just go drive to someone's house. Just go drive there. Okay, and ring the doorbell and surprise them. If they think that you're a weirdo for doing that, that might not be your friend. Okay, but if you can't just drive or just call somebody, this is the thing. This is what we've come to. We've come to a society and a time in life where if you call somebody, people will be like, why is this person calling me? Is something wrong? Oh, I don't have time to answer this right now. I mean, am I right? Think about it. Everyone wants to text, maybe snap each other all day long. But people don't want to answer the phone. Nothing beats conversation. I mean, of course, ideally in person with someone or with your voices. Okay. Sending each other bitmojis and emojis and acronyms and LOLs and LMFAOs and he he's and little yellow round bald dudes crying and laughing and, you know, the chick with the turquoise turtleneck sweater that's flicking her hair and all of these fucking emojis that people send each other all day long man you guys fine it's all fun it's all fine and dandy every once in a while preferably more often than not stop doing that and sit with each other have a meal talk to each other okay call each other stop sending each other the newest emojis okay stop doing that okay you do not need to send each other pictures and videos of you with a face filter that makes everyone look like they have perfect skin with antlers and a crown and stars. And just stop doing that, okay? Have a conversation with each other. Spend time with each other in real life, okay? These things matter, okay? These things matter. This is I'm not trying to preach to you guys, okay? This is what I've learned. This is what I'm experiencing. We're evolving and growing as people together, okay? These are the things that will provide longevity, okay? If Instagram were to crash right now, we treat these things, these staples of our social media world as, as if they're never going to be gone. If Instagram, because it's a computer program, it's an app, if it were to crash right now and just be unrecoverable, I don't even know if unrecoverable is a word. I'm going to look it up while talking to you guys. But the point being is if it's gone, what happens? Do the people that you talk to every day via Instagram, do you have their phone number? Are they your friends in real life? Because if they're not, 
how much of a friend is that really? That's your internet friend. That's your IG homie. You guys send each other DMs back and forth, right? You guys Snapchat each other all day long. What if Snapchat crashes? Is that your is that someone you could call? Would they would they wonder what happened to you? Would they go check on you? Does this sound like I'm being over the top and dramatic? No, man, this is the reality, okay? This is the reality of what's going on. The the main saying that I have about the Think Bigger project and obviously now through the Think Bigger podcast is it's not about telling you what to think. It's about teaching you how to think, how to think, and you can do with that what you will. You can apply that in the ways that you choose to. I'm not going to tell you how to think. I'm going to tell you what I believe from experience and observation is what will help all of us grow and better the world around us, better the society and the culture and our, the, of our loved ones around us. But it's not about what to do, it's how to think. That's why it's called the Think Bigger Project. It is about how you think, how you conduct business, okay? How you treat other human beings, how you behave in your relationships, how you build a car, how you do anything comes from the way that you think, okay? And if you can start there, then everything else will follow, okay? Back to the passion. You can have all the passion in the world, but if you don't have the work ethic, if you don't have the drive, and you don't have the focus, what are you working for? What are your passionate emotions? Go where are they going, right? If you have the work ethic, what are you working on if you don't know what the end goal is, if you don't have something to be focused on? That is what the Think Bigger Project is all about. Passion, drive, and focus, okay? So all of these things I want to know your thoughts on. Okay, comment, DM me on Instagram, comment on the YouTube channel. I will find the time to respond, okay? I will communicate with you about it. It is crucial to have a conversation, and this is the method that we're utilizing right now. So the conversation occurs when you listen to these words and you share your thoughts on it. Your reactions, do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you love what's happening in here? Do you hate it? Do you want to do you want to knock me out because you think I'm an idiot? Do you think that I am saying things that more people need to say? All of that stuff matters to me, okay? You don't like what I'm saying? Tell me you don't like what I'm saying, but be an adult and tell me why. Elaborate. Tell me what you disagree with. And why you disagree with it. For those of you that think one or two or all of the subjects and things that I've, I've talked about that come from both what I've observed and learned from the people in the world around me and from what I've experienced, if you agree with it to some degree or all the way, tell me and tell me why. I want to know. This is a conversation between adults. You could be 12 you could be 42 listening to this. You could be older than that, younger than that. The internet creates this world where we can all be together, okay? And we can all experience many of the same things and we can communicate with each other. So that's what this is. The Think Bigger podcast, which is the branch of the Think Bigger project, is a thought-provoking conversation to better the culture around us, okay? So comment email, DM on the Instagram. Let me know your thoughts. And you can also talk about other subjects and I will make them the focal point of each and, and, and other upcoming episodes of the Think Bigger podcast. Okay. So you guys comment. It's important to me. Your feedback's important. This is not me talking at you. This is me talking to you. And I want you to talk back to me. Okay. So thinkbiggerproject.com. Okay, the YouTube links there, other links are there. This is the Think Bigger podcast. You can talk to me directly at the Big Mike on Instagram, T H E B I G M I K E. I look forward to hearing from you. I appreciate all of you. Think big, then think bigger. Think bigger project. 
I'm out for now. Next episode comes up soon. Thank you for your time.